Hi, this is Lenny Cameron, and I'm here today with Kathleen Basie. Hey, Kathleen. Hi. And we're going to talk about your beautiful novel, A Song for the Road. It's your debut. It just came out this week, and I had such a hard time writing my review for this book because it's so beautiful. It made me cry. It left me uplifted. It made me question all my decisions in life. It made me think about <laughs> grief and hope and Oh my goodness, congratulations. This is a truly beautiful novel. Thank you so much. It's definitely been a labor of love and I am I'm just so thrilled to have it out there in the world. So tell us a little bit more about A Song for the Road. Let's talk about the book and maybe tell me a little of your inspiration for this novel. Sure. A Song from the Road um, was born from a dream. I woke up one morning um, with this incredibly poignant image and the rest of the dream had gone away. And what I was left with was um, the idea of standing in a beautiful, beautiful place at the end of a very long journey um, have, and, and knowing that I was looking at the place where I had lost my family. And that sounds so depressing, but, the, but that, was not the, that was not the feeling of the dream. It was an incredibly hopeful and uplifting and it was like, it was beautiful. And I thought, now how do those two things go together? There has got to be a story in this. So it took me quite a long time to figure out how to write that story in an uplifting and beautiful and hope-filled way. Um, but I, but the end result is a song for the road. And it's the story of Miriam, who's a church musician, who um, pretty spectacularly self-destructs when she's asked to do a funeral on the anniversary of her family's death. And she realizes that she has to change something. And so when she discovers that her daughter wrote her a flip a coin road trip app for her phone, she just takes off across the country to honor her family with this road trip. And it becomes a, sort of a musical pilgrimage. And where did the idea for that concept of the teenagers wrote an app and then they, you know, the whole family except for her gets in this awful road accident and it, and the opening pages of the novel, like you say, it's a year later, she's been dealing with grief for a year or, or maybe not dealing with her grief is a better way to put it. Yes. And where did that whole concept, it was brilliant, right? Like I could totally relate that if I were in that headspace and I discovered my kids had written an app where they wanted to send me on a road trip, I'd be in the car. Like, absolutely. Right. It's a way to reconnect with these people that you've lost who are your life. How on earth did you come up with that concept? It's so unique and interesting. I don't even know at this point, but what I will say is that everything in my life is a um, is a piling on of influences that don't necessarily converge until much later. So I grew up doing road road trip vacations with my grandparents. First, we would go on these huge looping um, trips from central Missouri, where I live, um, through the national parks all the way to the West Coast, down the West Coast to Disneyland and back home. And so that's one influence. And then secondly, I remember um, a, a couple that we knew, that my husband and I knew when we were engaged and first married, um, that they took a trip like this once where they didn't, they just said, okay, we're going to start out going west. And then every time they came to an interchange, they would flip a coin and decide if, you know, heads meant north and tails meant south or whatever. And they would just, she said it was the best vacation they'd ever done. So those two things I'm sure came together, but what the alchemy is that made it happen, I could not tell you. It just, it just happened. It's an incredibly special book and it's so hard. I don't think I could do this to write, to write a book that's about dealing with grief that is so hopeful. I mean, to me, this book is actually about her making the decision to move on and you can still be happy in spite of the worst things happening. And like yeah. you portrayed that so well in this book and I'm not giving away anything about how the book goes or the ending just to say that it's full of hope. You're like, don't read this book thinking it's a really sad book that is all about grief. It's actually all about how do you make the decision to continue is how, what I feel like you wrote a book about. Yeah. And that's, that was what I, I knew that this was a very potentially a very heavy topic. And, and in fact, some, some people like when the first times when I would put, you know, when somebody would say, what's your book about? And I'd be like, well, and you'd just see the eyes glaze over. And I was like, oh, I got to figure out a better way to talk about this <laughs> book because you no one will ever read it. And I was so many times during my, during the writing, during the editing, during the submitting, I was just sure that it would never go anywhere because, you know, who, who can even fathom this idea? 
And and so I knew that it had to be a, a hopeful book. I didn't want to write something heavy and depressing. And I think the thing that really makes it work um, is that she is not by herself through this whole road trip. Um, I knew that I, I like to write in people's heads and my critique partners are always saying, oh, too much, too much. Get out of her head, get out of her head. So um, I knew going in that I had to get her in company as soon as possible. And the best thing that I could come up with was for her to pick up a hitchhiker. So out of that came this young and incredibly vibrant um, pregnant hitchhiker named Dicey, who uh, who just really plays off of Miriam and won't let her wallow and adds a lot of life and vibrancy and humor to the book that um, that just really made the whole thing come alive. It does. There are some beautifully poignant moments between the two of them. It, it really works really well. So let's take a quick peek at a review of the book. Um, this one's by one of my favorite authors, Carrie Ann King. And I, I thought she caught it so well. She says, in a novel filled with music, heartbreak, and surprising laughter, Basie takes us on a journey that encompasses both unimaginable loss and the powerful resilience of the human heart a must, must have book club read. And I love looking at the early reviews for books. It always makes me smile, especially when it's a friend's book. And you know, the, the word that shows up the most often in your reviews is powerful, powerfully, mm. emotionally complex, powerful, poignant, stays with you, pulled at the heartstrings and lyrical prose. The use of music and the way you pull music and language together to convey emotion in this book, I had like, I was like highlighting whole passages. I had those moments of like, oh my goodness, I wish I could write like that. How do I learn from Kathleen here? <laughs> Thank you. I, I really do love um, music. And I actually think that probably there's something in the, in being a musician myself, my degrees are in music, I'm a flutist. And I think there's probably something in in being so clued into music that that translates into the page, and that I that I hear sentences in my head um, with a flow that's impacted by by my musical training. I'm sure. You can tell it really does. Like the the lyricism of the language in this book is is breathtaking. It's beautiful. There are so many points, like whole paragraphs, that I was like, that entire paragraph is just so ah beautiful. So how do you edit a book like that? You are so welcome. I loved this book. Um, so how do you edit a book like that? Like what was involved? This is your debut. Often it, we're also learning the whole craft. At least I was as I was editing my debut. So like, what did that look like? That whole process of editing this book? Well, um, I have a really fabulous set of critique partners here, um, here locally. And I think what's amazing is that we've been together for a long time now and that it's a very diverse group of authors. So there are two of us who are writing in the sort of women's fiction realm, and there are YA authors and fantasy authors in this group. And so you have, and literary, and you, so you have this really wide, um, we, we have really, I really feel like I get a good, um, a lot of perspective from people mm -hmm. around, all, all around from different points of view, and that helps a lot. Um, but it definitely went through many, many, many revisions. Um, is, even is there anything started, that's different, like that readers might be surprised to know yeah, is different actually, in the final than the original? Interestingly, when I first conceived the idea for this book, I thought she was going to be a viral internet sensation. And that was the way it went to the agents, actually. And that was, it was still in the book, um, when I signed with agents that she was, she became a viral superstar on the internet. And so everywhere she went, she was dealing with trolls and, and people coming out of the woodwork and wanting to talk to her wherever she was. And it, um, and it, and when it, when it got to editing at the publishing house, they said, it just really kind of distracts it. You don't need all of that. The, the, her journey carries it. And I would never have guessed that 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 because that was so fundamental to me to what the story was structured around that I would never have guessed that it would come out or that it would be so successful. But I am just in awe of editors because they can see the forest around the trees and make those kinds of calls that that I was way too deep into the weeds to to see myself. But they were right. 
Isn't that amazing? It's sometimes like you grow this thing and at some point you realize the one of the original seeds doesn't doesn't matter, right? It's Ooh, not the story. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so do you have a chance to read at all these days as you're in the middle of having done your book launch here for the last few weeks? And I, I'm just so excited this book is going to be in readers' hands this week. But do you read? Do you have a chance? I do read. I like to read when I eat and I will frequently like feed my kids when they are home so that I can then read on my own later and I'll sit with them and talk and then read. Um, so I actually have three books that are the newest in my to read stack. I actually had two from the library. I took a long hiatus from the library because I had bought so many books that I needed to read. But I, um, I wanted to, after I saw Sanditon, I had to go back and read the book because the first, um, because the first season of Sanditon, it did not even occur to me that that was going to be a series. Um, and I needed some closure. So I went back and read the version of Sanditon that was finished by And Another Lady. And that was great fun. And I have also read this book by Yagiasi, I believe is how it's pronounced. I don't really know. But Transcendent Kingdom, which I just finished. A very, I've very heard interesting great book. things about that book. I haven't read it. Yeah, yeah, it's getting very, amazing very interviews and coverage. And then one that I just really have to highlight, you got to give me a second to get it up um, on my, on my, uh, hmm. oh shoot, I've got a big glare on it. This is called yeah, no, the, I can rules, see it. the Rules of Arrangement. And this one is coming out from Alcove in the summer sometime. So I got a, got to get a, a sneak peek at this and it's unbelievable. It's fabulous. You should all check it out. Oh, okay. Now I'm off to ask Anisha how I get my hands on an early copy of that one because I've, I've been following her, her story on Instagram. So. Oh, it's so good. Her, her main character is so smart Alec and just determined to, to like, she's caught between worlds. Oh, it was, it's just fabulous. I just loved everything oh, about fabulous. it. So what about writing advice? You made it this far. Your book's getting so so much great acclaim here. It's so beautiful. What, what do you advise people who are earlier on the path? Like, what's your best advice? I think um, there that being an author is inherently a, an egotistical thing. Like, we think there's something inside of us that is worth other people paying attention to. And that is inherently an egotistical thing. And yet we have so much self um, lack of self-confidence about it because we're burying ourselves. So I think my, um, my advice is that it took me a long time to get to this point, a very long time. And I value that whole process because um, I learned so much and I'm so much better of a writer and I'm so much more mature a human being. So I have more to say now than I did. So patience and persistence, but also I would say humility, because we have to learn how to take critiques and we have to learn how to open our hearts and see our work from other people's points of view in order to, in order to reach our full potential. That is my belief. And I think that when we do that, this amazing thing happens that we don't really realize is happening because as we learn to accept other people's points of view of our work, we also learn to just see through other people's eyes. And that makes us better human beings if we let ourselves. Yeah. It's also like an exercise in empathy, right? Like to be able to see the world the way other people see it, not just the way you see it, which is born of your own experiences. And right. your book did that for me. It took me through an experience that I hope I will never live this lifetime, right? No one wants to imagine yeah, the right. horror of losing all of their loved ones in one moment, right? And yet <laughs> being able to live that through fiction is a really amazing experience. I mean, you created something very special where people get to go on that journey and, and, and yet end hopeful, right? Which is so hard. I mean, you did something so difficult here and you did it so well. So congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so and much. Before I show people how they can uh, connect with you, anything I haven't asked you that you wanted to make sure you talked about? I I don't think so. I'm just so thrilled with with being on on the. I'm just so thrilled that this book is out there and ready to be read by people. It's 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 just it's just a delight. It's a it's a fulfillment of a lot of a lot of years of work 
and a lot of dreams. So thank you to everyone who reads it. And I hope that you'll reach out to me. And if anyone has a book club that they'd like you to join, I know you'd be willing to join book clubs. You'd love to do that. I think this would be a fabulous book for discussing at book clubs. And on that angle, let's talk about how we can find you. You're at Kathleen Basie, uh, K-A-T-H-L-E-E-N-B-A-S-I on Instagram. And the same um, on the web, if you want to find all your other social medias, KathleenBasie.com. And yeah, I think it would be a fabulous book club book. And I'm hoping that it gets put in uh, for lots of awards because I think this book could be a real award winner. I really think it's that well written. So I'd encourage you, go go get your publisher, submit it to some awards. And I'd encourage everybody to watch because I bet you're going to win some of those. I'm predicting, making a prediction there. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. It's been lovely. And you are lovely. Take care, Kathleen.